space. Just sit back and enjoy the show. Paranormal Investigations of Wichita. We're going to have an interview with Tom Tongue here. Uh, we're sitting here in the studio today with Joe and Kyle. Um, just getting ready to do this. We came across him on the internet. Tom Tongue in the house from the Paranormal Investigations of Wichita. Uh, based out of Wichita, Kansas, I believe. Is that right? That's correct. Cool. And uh, wh- where are some of the places you go around here uh, as far as... Uh, different cities, different areas, and you do where you do your investigations at. Um, we've done several in the Wichita area, um, but we have had great success south of the city, down in Wellington, uh, Oxford, that uh, that area, Clearwater, that area down there. Oh, yeah, not those, so many in Wichita, believe those, it or not. Yeah, and those are, you know, those are pretty much, everything down there is really old, so there, you know, there's got to be a possible of a lot of residual activity going on down there, right? Well, some of those cities, you know, date back to 1870s, and uh, if you remember your history, uh, Wellington had a tornado down there in about 1890 or so, and tore out the town down there, they had to rebuild it, so... I'm sure there's a lot of life lost and memories down there that are a lot of it being residual. Sure, I would agree with that. Right on. Um, also, how long have you been into uh, paranormal investigation or just uh, interest in the paranormal in general? How long have you had that interest? You know, that dates back to um, last year of college for me, and that uh, goes back quite a ways. I'm not going to say how far, but uh, <laughs> well, I'm older than dates in the grant, okay? Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> And, uh, you know, it's, it would be a long story, but, but my first brush with it was a real estate lady uh, taking a picture of a house she was going to list, and the guy was selling it because it was haunted by his dead wife, who had died three weeks earlier. Mm-hmm. And apparently, you know, she would stand at the end of the bed at night and look at him and his new girlfriend, <laughs> and not making things real happy there, but she took a Polaroid picture, and lo and behold, in it, she was standing between the uh, storm door and the regular door. Oh, wow. And you could compare it to the pictures in the house, and there was absolutely no doubt of who that was. And she was standing there with her hand on her hip looking up going, why are you taking a picture of this place? You know? Oh, wow. <laughs> so that was the introduction for me. So how many how many cases have you have you done over the years as far as investigating? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I never counted them. <laughs> We've been... Uh, We've been to Scotland. We've been, uh, you know, we do a lot of the, the, the places you might see on TV, like Waverly and Bobby Mack right. and that kind of thing. So, and number of personal homes and businesses. So I never really added them up, but, but plenty. Now the Bobby Mack, that's that's a bar, isn't it? Pardon me. That the Bobby Mack place, that's a bar, isn't it? Yeah, it's a honky tonk bar. Um, you know, the ghost adventure guys made a big deal out of that, having a demon down in the basement. But right, <laughs> right. You know, kind of kind of doubt that <laughs> okay well how has your view of the paranormal changed since you started investigating how has it changed yeah has it changed any I, do you have more of a belief do you have more of a debunking attitude oh. now what do you um, feel you know what when we go into a private home and somebody who's having problems um our attitude is we're going to believe you until we prove you wrong right rather rather than going in to prove them wrong um, because he, going in with a negative attitude like that really doesn't do anything to help them. Right. So, uh, you know, we, we give it plenty of time and set things out uh, and make sure that they get a good amount of our time and whatever expertise we may bring to the table before we would tell them anything. Okay. And I, I have to tell you, most of the time we get called in, very rarely do we not find something going on. Yeah. You know, it almost makes you think you can walk into any house, set up the equipment, get up to reporters, and somebody's going to talk to you. <laughs> right, right. You know? Now, now, have you ever had a, a uh, I don't know if you use the term client, have you ever had a, a client uh, try to fool you? Um, no, not really. No? Well, that's pretty good. No? Yeah, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've never really thought about that, but uh, I've seen, you know, obviously uh, the ghost signs have that happen to them once. And right, with the speakers I, I, in the bathroom. I've never seen that. Okay, cool. Now, what, what, okay, in all your investigating, what would you say your number one case would be, and where was it? Um, good question. Um, probably one of the earlier ones we did in actually the city of Wichita uh, is the Emily's Beauty Salon down on South Seneca. And it was built, 
uh, I think in the late 19th century. It's a very small place. Uh, but um, they called us in because they wanted to verify whether they were actually seeing and hearing things. And their customers were seeing things as well. And um, we set up shop one night, and we said, okay, who's here with us? You know, a really stupid TV question. Mm -hmm. And we got a guy comes back, and he says, Ed Woods. <laughs> and we had no idea who he was talking about. So Jeff, the guy who owns the place, went to the local library and whatnot and went back to history and found out that in 1912, indeed, that fellow named Ed Woods owned the home. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so... That, that place was loaded with spirits. I mean, just packed. So how many how many <laughs> EVPs? In it. How many EVPs did you walk out of there with? I couldn't even tell you. Really? We we we, we did that place for two years. Wow. Now on was, the, go ahead. Um, there used to be bikers that used to live there, and um, they what they would do is they go out in the garage and get drunk, and the first guy to fell fall down drunk would write his name or saying on the garage door. And so that's how we kind of picked up on who these guys were, and we started using their names, and then they really started coming talking to us. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you used some, so you used some evoking. Uh, you called them by their actual names, and you, you found you got more of a response with that than just walking in there blindly not knowing who or what? Oh, yeah, yeah. When we started saying Tony and so forth, they, they would really, and you know what, they kind of, you got the thing that kind of knew you, mm -hmm. so that when, when we'd go in, there'd be like two of us, they would, they would talk to, and anybody else would go in, and they really wouldn't say too much, <laughs> because if everyone goes else with, you know, with the, give us a sign of your presence stuff, which, you know, some, some of those guys don't even know who you're talking to, you know? Right. So, uh, yeah, they, they started talking to us, I think that was a, a way to break the ice with some of them, so that was pretty cool. Now, how many people do you have on your team? I mean, is there is there an influx of just uh, different people every time, or do you have a set team that you like to travel with and do this with? Uh, you know, what yeah, we we have a set team. Um, we're on the we're on the website. We show everybody's face and where they're from. Um, you know, it kind of depends on how many people we use for an investigation because of size and people's lives and so forth. But um, totally, we have eleven people here in in the Wichita area that help out at varying times and we have some people in other cities that give us assistance as well. well that's great what kind of equipment do you use well um, let's see in cameras we use thermal imaging we use full spectrum uh, we've got about four of those we use I IR cameras um, and obviously digital hand cameras mm -hmm. um, we've got all kinds of EMF detectors you name it we probably have one of them mm -hmm. Um, and recorders go from the handheld uh, Olympus up to the uh, the H4, which you know is a Dolby digital nice. expensive piece of equipment that basically uses a uses a static microphone in the middle of a room or something. Okay. Now, what do you think of the uh, the K2 device? Well, you know, we do a lot of uh, fundraising things, mm -hmm. and um, that thing. It's interesting because you can use it in the dark and it lights up, unlike mm -hmm. some of the other things that you can use. And the problem with it is the way any time a cell phone goes after a satellite signal, it'll set it off. Okay. So when you're in a dark room with a crowd of people and your cell phone goes looking for a signal, when the thing goes off, everybody gasps. So <laughs> right, it could <laughs> you know, be makes them feel good. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's no way to really filter out what it is. No, that no, we use a, we use millimeters too to do that. But, okay. Uh, you know, just for fun, it's nice to have around. Right. Now, as I've noticed with a bunch of other paranormal teams, a lot of times they will take audio recordings and uh, over-process them so much that it just, you can't tell if it really is an EVP or if they've just processed the, the hell out of it to where you can't, you could make anything out of it. When you guys do your EVPs, do you, do you over-process them or, or are they clear? You know what I mean? Like, if you get a good EVP, you should be able to just hit play and hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I generally um, will turn up the volume and take out about 8% of the background hits from the recorder on almost anything we would do. Mm -hmm. now, obviously, we do get some that we don't have to do anything to. They're just so clear. Right. Um, but but some of them are in the background, or sometimes they have to be slowed down a little bit because these guys tend to talk pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as 
I, I know what you're talking about. It, it sounds like uh, something out of a uh, like the Matrix, uh, well, it's their organ or something. Right, you know? right. Yeah, no, we don't. I don't. I didn't bother with those. That's, okay, that's silly. Good. Well, it's really great to have somebody in the Wichita team who's taken in the Wichita area that's taking uh, the paranormal investigation scene serious. Uh, I know a lot of people have tried, and you know they, these groups come and go overnight. You know what I mean? Um, how how long has your team in the current configuration? How long have you guys been investigating? Um, I think we're in our seventh and a half year or so. Oh, nice, nice. So yeah, have, as the current team stands, yeah. Now, getting, getting uh, I don't know what they would call it, but being, like, TAPS approved, have you guys ever tried doing that or uh, becoming affiliated with any other groups? Um, I, I've joined some things on the Internet for us to make contacts with every off, every now and then, but um, once again, as you said, those things come and go, too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got a friend up in New Jersey who we exchange cases with. Um, we got one down in Florida we exchange cases with. But but for the most part, those things, it's like going to a convention mm-hmm. and, and someone's going to teach you how to use the K2 meter, you know, or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. Now, so do, we don't you really... get, do you guys have a Facebook page that uh, our listeners could go yep. to? And yep, what is sure it? do. It, it's just paranormal investigations. Okay. And how about a dot com? Um, we do. If you just put in paranormal investigations of Wichita on Google, we come right up to the top. All right. And if anybody needs to get a hold of you for any sort of uh, uh, future investigations, if anybody out there needs your help, what would be an email address they could get you at? We use uh, the one my daughter came up with, uh, tt.spook at gmail.com. Okay, and they they would just send you like information on uh, this is what's going on. I want somebody to come come make sure I'm not crazy, basically. And you know they give you and you will contact them and uh, t- yeah, t- yeah okay. absolutely. And you know what we can we will help try to help somebody anywhere, not just Wichita. Great. Now your services um, are they free? We we as far as our team goes, I try to keep free within a hundred miles of Wichita. Good. Okay. After that, uh, <laughs> I look for other teams. <laughs> right. Well, because travel costs money, as always. <laughs> yeah. That's understandable. Yeah. That's understandable. Well, Tom Tong, thank you very much for being a part of In Space with us tonight. We really appreciate it. We wish you luck in your uh, future endeavors and searching out the paranormal for us people out here that don't really have the equipment, time, or uh, accessibility to do that. We want to thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for calling. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Not a problem. Hey, you have a good day, Tom. Thank you, too, sir. Well, guys, what would you think? I can tell that that guy is definitely experienced. He is. He's very professional. You can tell he knows exactly what he's talking about. Joe, what would you think about that? Yeah, it was, it was very cool to hear all the different places, like in Wichita. Well, I know you only mentioned one, but I didn't realize... It was enough to form a group. Did he say seven years? Yeah, and I, I didn't expect them to be going outside of the country either. When we yeah, first that's amazing. Just yeah, we, found them. Yeah, we would have known that. That's amazing for a local group to be doing that much stuff. And that's for really him cool. to talk about the other groups who are doing investigations out there, you know, he said he's been to some of the places we've all seen on these shows, right? And their team. So it's kind of cool to like Waverly Place and the Bobby Mac uh, yeah, yeah. Roadhouse Bar, or whatever. I know that place is pretty freaky. I've seen a couple shows about that. But, you know, what's on TV, you can't really judge. Now, these guys aren't on TV. They go out there and do this in their free time like a like a local band would, you know, or like a local podcast uh, show would do. You know, they spend their own money and their own time going out and doing this. And he said within he keeps it free within 100 miles of the Wichita area, which I think is totally yeah. legit. Oh, that yeah. was amazing to hear that it was free. That's straight up legit. You know, it's understandable that there are expenses when you do when you have a hobby such as that. But when you're also somebody needs your help or wants you there to investigate a problem, yeah, maybe chip in a little on gas and maybe give us a place to stay. Totally legit. I totally agree with his philosophy on that. Uh, it's not like they're really out there to make money. So you know that gives him a big L for me. Big legit right there. 